Hyponatremia refers to a condition where the concentration of sodium in the blood is too low. The normal range is between 135 and 145 milliequivalents per litre. Therefore, under 135 is considered hyponatremic, but a severe hyponatremia is seen when the level goes below 120 milliequivalents per litre. If this change happens acutely, it tends to be more severe and may be associated with seizures, coma, brainstem herniations, and deaths. A slower or chronic change causing hyponatremia tends to cause headaches, nausea, vomiting, lethargy and weakness, but rarely causes death. So when we encounter a patient with hyponatremia, there are several steps to take in order to find the cause. The first is to assess the plasma osmolality, the concentration of the plasma. A way to get an estimate of it is by this formula, so 2 times the concentration of sodium plus 2 times the concentration of potassium, then adding the concentration of glucose and urea in millimoles per litre. If you are using milligrams per deciliter for glucose and urea, you can just divide the glucose number by 18 and the urea by 2.8. If the plasma osmolality is normal, so between 280 and 295 milliosmoles per litre, then you have an isotonic hyponatremia, which is a pseudo-hyponatremia. In this scenario, there is an excess in plasma proteins or triglycerides, which makes the sodium concentration appear low. Without these excess proteins or triglycerides, the concentration would be normal. A high plasma osmolality, so a hypertonic osmolality, is also known as translocational hyponatremia. This occurs because of water being drawn out of the cells, which then leads to the sodium concentration decreasing. This is most commonly caused by hyperglycemia or through infusion of hypertonic solutions. If, however, the plasma osmolality is low, then you have a true hyponatremia. In this case, the next step is to assess the volume status of the patient. You can look at things such as the skin turgor, status of the mucous membranes, blood pressure, and even using ultrasound to look at the status of the inferior vena cava, which is a marker of the hydration of a patient. Euvolemic hyponatremia occurs when the total sodium content of the body is normal, but there is an increase in the total body water. This can occur due to hypoaldosteronism, as well as diuretic use. It can also be caused by the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, or SIAD, which is where excess antidiuretic hormone is secreted. SIAD can be caused by tumours, CNS infections, cystic fibrosis, as well as some medications, including antidepressants, especially the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like citalopram, anticonvulsants such as carbamazepine can also cause it, as well as antipsychotics, cytotoxic agents, and pain medications. Treatment in this instance is to restrict fluids and to stop any medications that may be causing the hyponatremia. Vactans, which are antidiuretic hormone receptor antagonists, may also be used. Hypovolemic hyponatremia occurs when the total body water decreases, but the body sodium drops more. Causes can be divided into extrarenal and renal causes. Extrarenal causes include vomiting and diarrhea, third space losses, and traumatized muscle. Renal causes include diuretics, especially in the elderly, as their ability to dilute urine is decreased, and hypoaldosteronism. We already touched on hypoaldosteronism in euvolemic hyponatremia, but the mechanism is that the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system and antidiuretic hormone system may become activated, but due to the lack of aldosterone, little sodium is reabsorbed, while more free water is reabsorbed as a result of the action of the antidiuretic hormone, also known as vasopressin. It causes aquaporin-2 channels to be inserted into the membranes of the principal cells, in the distal tubule and collecting duct, allowing free water to pass from the urine back into the cells and ultimately back into the blood. The renal and extrarenal categories can be distinguished by looking at the urinary concentration of sodium. If it is low, then the kidney is functional and able to reabsorb sodium, whereas if we see a higher sodium concentration, 
then that tells us the kidney is not able to reabsorb the sodium properly. Treatment includes giving isotonic saline and stopping diuretics. Hypervolemic hyponatremia comes from an increase in both total body sodium and total body water, but more so water than sodium, causing the concentration of sodium to drop. Here, the causes include chronic kidney disease, heart failure, nephrotic syndrome, and cirrhosis. Typically, in the chronic kidney disease patients, the urinary concentration of sodium will be increased, while in the others, it will be lower due to the dysfunction of the kidneys. Treatment includes diuretics, water and salt restriction, and in some cases, dialysis.